So those are the kinds of things that we are very, very committed to. And so Paul, in writing of the book of Ephesians, just stick with me this morning. I'm going to teach, but I want us to lay the groundwork of what's going on in this, in this particular chapter. Paul is talking to a church that is struggling against idolatry. Amen? Amen? And so he wants them to understand what's the real deal. Because these other things aren't really the real deal. Sports and things and stuff, that's not really what God has for us. God's got something greater than those kinds of things. So there are, there are real benefits to being saved. And I know uh, we uh, believe that God's going to give us the stuff, and that's fine. He said He would. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, He said what? Seek ye first, don't turn there, I'm just going to record it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these what? These things will be added to you. He says, I know what things you have need of. You know, I know you want some of the Nikes. He says, I know you want to stay up to the date with everything that's going on. God is not against that, just so you know. So don't think I'm putting down fashion. You know, I love fashion. You look nice. I love, I love fashion. I love, you know, the things that, we, that God gives us. But at the same token, I understand that there is a priority. And we have to prioritize what's the real deal and what's not. Amen? Amen? And so in chapter 1, verse 1, Paul says, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. He said, I, I'm an apostle. I didn't make myself an apostle. I didn't go online and get the bishop uh, title, but God made me a, an apostle. And he says, I'm writing to the saints that have continued to stand faithful in Christ because it's not easy to do. Just look at the world we're living in. It's not easy to be 100% committed to God. Now, there are some things that God's going to make you give up. One of the things that I talked about at the men's meeting, I'm not going to give it all away, but I am going to give this little piece away. And that is that sometimes God will tell you to give up your toys. God will tell you to give up your sports. Because He knows it is that sport thing that stops you from really serving Him. There is a, 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 a situation in our nation, and it's really affected the church that makes it hard to stay faithful, that sometimes the church, they will rush the service so they can get done in time so people can shoot home to see the Super Bowl. Because the Super Bowl, in the hearts of many Christians, is more important than God. And it's a reality. And so there are some who have completely given up their faithfulness to God because in order for them to be faithful to God, they have to let go of some things, some family members, some, you know, some barbecues. Some other kind of things that keep you from being committed. Someone say committed. committed. Walking with God is all about being committed and making God first. Amen. So when you look at the text here, Paul said, I'm writing to the group of you that are faithful in Christ Jesus. And so that's, that might seem like a light sentence, but that sentence means a lot because there was a lot of pressure on the church to get the people to come back over here where we are and worship the God that we worship, the God of Diana. He said, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So he lets them know, you know, we bless God because God has done spiritual things for us that nobody else can do. Amen. Spiritual blessings that come from heaven. The things that God does for you, you cannot receive from man. And in verse 4, he goes and he says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He says that God has blessed us and he has chosen us long time ago, he made a decision that he was going to save you. Even when I was messed up, even when you were messed up and doing your stuff, God said, look, I'm going to save that person. And then God does it according to his own will. He has chosen us uh, before the foundation of the world. It's not by chance that we're saved. Just so you know, God had his hand. It was in God's plan in advance. Your salvation was in the plan of God. It was such a wonderful thing that God has chosen us. I mean, we can take stock in that. We can be excited about the fact that the Lord could have left me out there. There was a group of people around me that were doing drugs just like I was doing drugs. There was a group of people around you that were having nervous breakdowns just like you were having nervous breakdowns. There are groups of people around you that have been raped just like some of you have been raped. There are groups of people around you that have tried to commit suicide just like some of you have tried or even thought about committing suicide. 
But God in His mercy and grace, way back before the foundation of the world, had in advance decided that He was going to save you. And He was going to deliver you. And I don't know what causes God to make that decision. Why did God pick me and not pick the person that was next to me? Why did God bring me out of darkness and say, listen, I'm going to uncover so you can see the truth about life and lead that person in total darkness? 